I would like to tell you about some uh, results um, that were obtained in collaboration with Stefan Baum, Matthias Christian, and Andreas Winter. This is the outline of my talk. So I will just briefly tell you about the basics, which maybe all you know, about entanglement swapping and quantum key repeaters. Tell you the motivation, uh, the main unfortunately impossibility result, which says that despite you have the two point-to-point -point keys, you, you may not be able to make them uh, at double distance. And then I recall the tools, which are private states, distillable key, and some of properties of them. And one of the important properties that led to this result is, uh, is hiding, are hiding security states. Then some formal statements and ideas of the proof, some other results, and I conclude with open questions. So, well, uh, in quantum internet, one of the main tasks is well, to send signals in, at large distances, uh, uh, especially when, when they are kind of delicate, like in QQD, like single photons, but what you face is, of course, the coherence. And, and the classical solution would be just to copy the signal and amplify it at some point. Uh, of course, quantumly, well, it's, it's not so easy because you have no cloning theorem due to Uther and Jurek, and you cannot do like that. Fortunately, at least in theory, uh, there is a, a solution of, which are quantum repeaters. And, and one of the building blocks you've heard already about on, on this conference uh, is the entanglement swapping. So just to say briefly, uh, what's, what's the scheme in my visualization? So we have Alice on left, Charlie in the middle, and Bob on the right. And Alice and Charlie shares an EBIT, and Charlie and Bob shares an EBIT, and Charlie performs teleportation of his half of EBIT that he shares with Alice through the singlet he shares with Bob, so that at the end, Charlie is decoupled and Alice and Bob shares an EBIT. Uh, well, uh, as I said, it's a building block for quantum repeaters, Euterbrick, Aldur, and Sirac. And in that scheme, you, have, you start with many copies of some noisy but distillable entangled states, uh, and copies of them between Alice Cherley and Cherley Bob. And then uh, the parties perform local, they distill um, EBITs by local operations and classical communication between Alice Cherley and Cherley Bob. And they, they end up with some approximate EBIT, perform entanglement swapping, and and, and end up with approximate EBIT at double distance between Alice and Bob. But what I would like to stress here is that, of course, quantum repeaters uh, can be treated as quantum key repeaters because in the same scheme, scheme at the end, you observe that Charlie is decoupled because sing, uh, EBIT is, is a pure state. It's decoupled from the rest of the world. And after measuring EBIT, you, you, you get a key for one time pad. So uh, we need to trust him anymore, and, and finally you can launch any entanglement-based um, uh, QKD protocol, like just to mention the BBM, Eckert's one, and Bart hardy Kane's one. So here we comes with the motivation. Uh, the repeater's protocol bases on the fact that the states are distillable, so you can distill pure entanglement out of them, and but we were aware of the fact that there are states which are useful for QQD, but nevertheless, you cannot distill EBITs from them. So that was our starting point. And the question was whether you, you can do something with that state. So, so our question was, well, is there another key swapping or quantum key repeaters protocol that um, can allow for distributing key in double distance using such states? And of course, it cannot use teleportation because if you cannot distill limits, you, you cannot teleport. Uh, that's the question. And to be precise, we changed the resource from noisy distillable state to noisy state, which is key. And, and instead of teleportation, we will allow for arbitrary uh, LOCC or protocol between the parties. So that's the scheme. Uh, they share mm, uh, here n copies of some noisy state that had is useful for QQD, which has key, and launch arbitrary protocol, and we ask how much privacy you get at double distance. 
And the main result is unfortunately, as I said, um, it's impossibility result. So for some of the states which are useful for QQD, uh, there does not exist uh, an efficient quantum key repeater. What I mean by um, efficient uh, means that, and, and useful for QQD, so you, we start with n copies of the state which each of them has approximately one bit of key. And no matter what LSC protocol we, we perform here, one cannot get more than epsilon, some negligible fraction of, this, of n bits of key uh, at the output. Uh, where, what, what does it mean more precisely? It's that whatever epsilon you give me, I will, I will find you a state which is about one bit of key and you cannot get more than epsilon n bits of key. Uh, fine, so, so to be, uh, so now I want to tell you something about these states which are uh, uh, somehow so, so useless for a repetition of the key. And to this end, so there are states with, with, with limited repeated key. Um, just, just to mention, uh, at the beginning, these are states which are, which has positive partial transposition and are approximate private bits. And now I explain you uh, what I mean by private bits and, and this PVT. So, so private bits are the states which has, has at least one ideal bit of key, which you can get after direct measurement in, in computational basis on, on subsystems. And here is the structure of them. So you have Alice and Bob shares a singlet state and um, maybe higher dimensional one. Uh, and on uh, another subsystem, A prime, B prime, Alice and Bob share arbitrary state rho. And all that is rotated by unitary, to, which is called twisting. And this unitary is, controls the AB system in computational basis and performs uh, a UIJ, some other unitary operation on, on this A prime, B prime system. So in a sense, they're kind of twisted singlets. So uh, the, this, this unitary twists the singlet into other system, which is shared by Alice and Bob. And quantitatively, if you ask how much of the privacy some arbitrary state row contains, if it's not ideal private bit, uh, well, or private state, it is the distillable key. So it's an ugly formula, but just intuitively it's amount how much of bits of key you can get after some LCC protocol on n copies of the state uh, divided by this number of states you have used in order to produce this key in asymptotic limit. And, um, and, and okay, so I've explained this part. By approximate p-bits, I mean that their private states are close in trace norm to, to I mean, states clo close in, in trace norm to private bits. And by PPT, I mean that uh, they are positive under partial transposition. So after applying transposition to one subsystem uh, to the state, you, you get a positive matrix. And what is known is that such states are useless for EB distillation and therefore for teleportation as well. And just for, uh, for this talk, I mean, uh, I, I use the Eric Rains notation, so instead of writing like that, partial transposition, I denoted like letter gamma, which is part of letter T. <laughs> it's like that. So, so this rho gamma means partial transpose state. And back to this example, I mean, which um, here I show you that uh, I claim it has li limited repeated key. So because it's approximate p bit, it has a, about one bit of key of this distillable key, so it is useful for. Uh, for QQD, it was actually shown that such states can, are useful for, for QQD, which are secular under coherent attacks, so general attacks. But at this point, you could ask, well, why this gonna happen? So why, why, why do such states have limited use for repeaters? And, um, and this is the key property that they unfortunately have, is that they can hide security. So. What does it mean? Uh, uh, this is the result concerning distinguishability of states, uh, bipartite states, by local operations and classical communication. So look, uh, this state, when shared by Alice and Bob, it, when they are at a distance, if they are able to perform only LOCC operations to discriminate, uh, they may not distinguish this state from some state which is uh, separable, which means insecure because separable states can be made from scratch by public discussion. So 
they are, of course, they have no key. So this is kind of a um, surprising property that's in the, the, distinguishable, the distinguishing probability is about half here. Um, so there exists some sigma, which is very close to rho in, in kind of that norm. But on the other hand, of course, when Alice and Bob meet by global distinguishing, they can untwist the singlet and they can make sure that it, it is a private state or approximate private state. So by global operations, you can distinguish the state rho from, from sigma. And the states uh, which have these two properties, uh, I call hiding security states. And well, so now we can come to, to show the first idea that you cannot key swap such state. So one cannot key swap um, the state which, is, which hides security. And, and the proof here goes uh, by contradiction. So suppose there is some LLC protocol that does the task, which means that you have a copy of hiding security state between Alice and Charlie, and between Charlie and Bob. And suppose there is a protocol P which makes you some well, approximate or should be approximate private state here at the end. And recall that hiding security means that there exists an insecure, a separable state, which is such that it's uh, indistinguishable, almost indistinguishable from the state row. So, well, let's take the state sigma, this red state here, and apply this hypothetical protocol to such state sigma. Um, Fine, so let Alice and Charlie share this insecure state and Charlie Bob share the, same, share the same insecure state and let us apply this hypothetical protocol P. Well, what, it, what you can do from something which is insecure um, by LOCC, it, can, it must be something insecure as well. So the end here, it must be a separable state. But hold on, so here you got in this upper protocol, in P you got a pri uh, private state, but here you got something separable. So let then Alice and Bob meet now, and let's perform uh, this global operation which I, which I told you that it exists, this untwist, untwisting operation. This allows them to distinguish this state from this output from the lower output uh, pretty well, right? With almost one prob probability, unit probability. So here we get a contradiction because let us now compose the protocol P with this protocol P prime and what we get is some LOCC operation, P double prime between Alice Bob together and Charlie at a distance. And such a protocol distinguishes between these initial states rho, actually in two copies, from these two copies of sigma, which was impossible uh, by assumption because the rho is hiding security. So that shows that if, if you have a hiding security state, you cannot, you cannot um, key swap it so that you cannot, you cannot get an approximate private state at the end. Uh, well, so that was a, a single copy case, but in quantum key repeaters, we know you are allowed to use many copies to distill some security. So, so we passed to analysis of the asymptotic case, and here it's the slide is a bit technical. So we defined formally uh, the rate of uh, the key repeater rate, which is like the distillable key, it is the amount of how many bits uh, you can get from some private state gamma after the protocol that you launch on n copies of the initial states between Alice Charlie and Charlie Bob, uh, where you allowed, are allowed to only to do LOCC operations in asymptotic limits. So this ratio, the number of bits to the number of states you used is in asymptotic limit is the key repeater rate. And the intermediate result we got, which is of independent interest, is that we can bound this quantity uh, by the, the measure of, uh, which is called restricted relative entropy of entanglement, uh, which kind of resembles the previous proof. That this, is, this is a kind of measure of distinguishability, in a sense, from some separable states, insecure states. Uh, of course, we have to regularize it. So take many copies and divide by n in asymptotic limit. And the main result is that, well, we use this bound and then we observe that this quantity, the restricted relative entropy of entanglement is somehow invariant under partial transposition. So it is the same of the, on the states after partial transposition. So if the states are PPT, so they are still positive, you can consider that these are states. 
and we bound it by twice because there are two copies, uh, the relative entropy of entanglement, but of uh, the state after partial transposition. And for hiding security states, uh, we know that there exists this insecure separable state, which is kind of close uh, to in trace norm to this partial transposed row. Uh, this is like, um, I told you about probability of distinguishing, but this, you know, that by Hellstrom formula, such a thing must be closed then, such trace norm distance. And because it's kind of exponentially distance in number of qubits, it's, it's one of the square of dimension, uh, by asymptotic continuity of relative entropy of entanglement, uh, this, is, this quantity here is about the, the trace norm times the log of dimension, which goes to zero. So, so here is the result that there are bipartite states with almost one bit of key, but for which the key repeater rates is, is, is bounded from above by something which vanishes if you enlarge the, the state. And, uh, well, here, I, I will show you this very easy proof which we, where we use partial transposition. So we leave behind this India idea of distinguishing. I mean, they know how it happens. It's kind of magic of, of this partial transposition, but it's kind of uh, very easy. So we observe that every protocol P which key swaps, which is some LCC operations, er, er, operation which end, ends up with uh, a private state, uh, for any such protocol, there exists another protocol, P1, which acts on partially transposed states. So suppose rho is PPT again, uh, which does the same, has the same output. So it's kind of magic. You just need to complex conjugate your Krauss operators and, and you get it. Well, but what's the consequence? So in consequence, the key repeater rate of these states and, and the partially transposed states is the same. So then you get a one-line proof. So you use this fact, and then you observe that any key repeater operation is some LOCC operation between actually Alice and Bob Charlie together. So it cannot increase the initial distillable key that was between Alice and Bob Charlie together. So that, that's why you have this bound, the first inequality. And this inequality is, is uh, well, is well known, so the, the relative entropy of entanglement is an upper bound on this double key. Um, and then you use again asymptotic continuity, so, so you, get, you, you get even better proof because you don't have factor two here. Fine, so then uh, we got some other, bound, other bounds on the key repeater rate, but we use more and more entanglement measures. And We'll use here distillable entanglement, which is the ratio of how many obtains you have, you have obtained how many e bits divided by the number of used states in asymptotic limit, and also entanglement cost, which is kind of reverse. So it's the ratio of uh, the number of obtained states divided by number of used e bits to create a state in asymptotic limit. And here are the bounds. So you have, uh, well, these arrows means that like here, there is a forward communication from Charlie to Alice and two-way communication between Charlie and Bob. Then you get that it's bounded by distillable entanglement uh, between Charlie and Bob, half of it plus half of entanglement cost of the state between Alice and Charlie. And here you have the other version of it, uh, two versions. So what we can see here with this kind of, in a sense, tight, because if you put here a singlet and here also a singlet, an e-bit, then you get here one on the right-hand side, and it corresponds to the fact that you actually can reach this one because it's entanglement swapping protocol. But on the other hand, if the state between Charlie Bob here is um, undistillable, so distillable entanglement is zero, you get that it, this quantity drops down by half. So we have used this uh, to get some result for the states for which the previous techniques, technique doesn't apply. So look, we take a state which is almost partially uh, transpose invariant. So after partial transposition, it gets just swapped. It's just get, it's locally 
equivalent because this row becomes partial transpose and this becomes row because partial transposition is an involution. So for such states for which you, you would get um, actually trivial bound from the previous technique, we observed that, um, just recall that all these two copies are shared between Alice and Shirley and, and these two copies between Shirley and Bob. And we get that the syllable key of, of these, states, these states is about one, but uh, the key repeater rate is about half because of this inequality. And you could think, well, maybe because of these results, you can devise um, some technique by degradation of key swapping rate, which is as follows. So suppose there exists an entanglement measure. Oh, sorry. Uh, suppose there exists an entanglement measure E so that um, on the output state of any key swapping protocol, it is not, not more, not bigger than the P times distillable entanglement of an initial state between Alice and Shirley plus one minus P of this measure E between Shirley and Bob, of the initial state between Shirley and Bob. For some P which is non-trivial, so it is uh, strictly be between zero and one. And then if, if such measure would exist, uh, then, then for a PPT state for which this, this term vanishes because entanglement, distillable entanglement is zero, uh, you would observe a degradation of this measure E because after key, repeating key times, this, because of this inequality you will get at it, it drops down with the factor one minus P to the K in front of the initial amount of this entanglement. And in addition, if, if, this, if this hypothetical entanglement measure E was the upper bound on key repeater rate, then we would observe degradation of key repeater rate as well. Uh, and actually there are known bounds on key repeater rate, which are relative entropy of entanglement, squashed entanglement, you have heard about it on this conference, and and entanglement of formation and entanglement cost. But actually what we get is, is that entanglement of formation so, and entanglement cost, so this, these two last measures, they does not satisfy, do not satisfy this relation uh, one. So you cannot use them to bound uh, the, this, the key repeater rate, um, which was kind of hard and was the big ending of the paper. So let me conclude. Uh, so we have this impossibility result. So there are states which are suitable for QQD, but uh, they essentially cannot be shared at, at double and, and longer distances. So we have this result for um, like sing just a single Charlie between Alice and Bob, but it can be many more Charlies and you get, get even worse results. And we got it both in single copy, so in key swapping and asymptotic case of key repeaters. So what are the implications? Well, this is kind of support for this distillable entanglement based um, quantum key repeaters. Um, there, you are aware there are a lot of serious ongoing projects about that. And well, the question is whether only distillable entanglement can be repeated. So it's kind of open. And well, we, we tried a little bit about partial transpose invariant states, but um, uh, it is still open how to get bound for them, and they're recently here by Ozo, Smith, and Smolin, some new uh, states invariant under partial transposition that have key has been found. And it also supports the so-called PPT square conjecture by Matthias Christian. So imagine you have a, a state with po positive partial transposition with, with Bob and the other with Charlie, and suppose Charlie performs a full measurement, then the output between Alice and Bob should be always separable, that's the conjecture. That no matter, I mean, no matter what, how you measure, if you measure completely, then the outputs, the conditional states would be separable. Of course, this is, we would, maybe you could have better bounds. And here is small commercial is that somehow surprisingly all these ideas uh, uh, could be, I mean, can be applied in, in the non-locality scenario and you can get some bounds for device-independent QQD, so if you are interested, you can look at this archive. We got with, with Glav Shamota, and with that, I would like to thank you for attention. 
<laughs> Does your upper bound apply for measurement device independent QPD setting? Um, sorry, can you repeat? Uh, th does, uh, does your theory, uh, can you apply your theory to measurement device independent QPD Measurement device setting? independent. Um, actually, a uh, good question. I haven't considered that. Um, I would have to think. M maybe yes, because um, I got some results for this device independent. Uh, QKD, so maybe this as well, but uh, here you would need to consider these measurements uh, on the kind of if side, it's kind of reverse. I mean, it's like Charlie. Yeah, one has to think. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know.